college linebacker. Here is undefeated and untested 208-pound Brian Minto comes from Butler, Pennsylvania. You see his record, 17-0, 10 knockouts. His last five will not do anything to oppress you in terms of name opponents, but it will give you a sense of his activity. Very rare that you see somebody whose last five only dates back five months. And here's the former hurler. Vinny started his ring experience by taking part in tough man contests when he had nights off from the grass diamond. He's turned it into a five-year pro career. 30-year-old is from New York. His last five will give you a glimpse of the six-fight win streak, the last five of it. Vinny has only stepped up once. It was two years ago. Took a beating from former world champ Al Cole. So Brian Minto, Vinny Madalone, heavyweights with 38 wins and only one loss among them. It's a matchup of two very tough and determined pluggers. And here's how each guy sees it. I'm definitely in your face type of style, you know. Uh, but the whole thing is, you know, just not always in your face. Just take angles on the guy. That's the biggest thing, you know. Of course, you want to be right there, but then you take those little side steps, and the guy don't see those punches coming. My game plan would be to box on the outside, make sure my defense is polished up, and don't get hit with any big shots. Alan Huggins, the referee. It's a 10-rounder. Gentlemen, you both have the instructions. Touch them up. Let's go. 10 we know what happened to Matt alone when he faced a fighter who was at the next level. You see the ring experience there. 22 fights for Matt alone, 17 for Minto. Of course, Minto's been busy in that year in seven months. Matt alone was exposed against Al Cole, damaged in that fight. Do you think in any way Minto will be exposed tonight, Teddy? Oh, Al Cole, of course, that's an old Al Cole, former cruiserweight champion. And you're right. A lot of people's uh, view of that fight, they thought that Madelon was lucky to finish that fight. But I think this is an even match fight. Different caliber, different experience level. Uh, Mento does not have the talent, even of an older Cole, or the experience, of course, of the former cruiserweight champion. I think this is a pretty even matchup. Well, we talked about Brian Minto and his activity. We'll take a look at how busy he has been. This is his third fight in 26 days, his 18th fight in the last 20 months. That's staying busy. Now, most of that work is done in the club scene of Western Pennsylvania, Pittsburgh, and West Virginia. But nonetheless, he's been active, Teddy. And man alone is acting like the bigger man. 230s he's been weighing throughout his career. Mental the smaller man. Last fight, 210 pounds. Been as low as 205. Tonight, he's 208 pounds. And Minto acting like the smaller guy and the faster guy, trying to box, use the ring. Be smart, be elusive, and try to take advantage of Matt Alone's aggressiveness. Try to get Matt Alone to be over aggressive, miss something, and then fill the spot. You can see that's the mindset, that's the plan for Minto and his people in the corner, Tom Yankello, who also trains former world champion Paul Spatafora. Of course, in the corner with Matt Alone, who's pressing the fight, is Bob Jackson. Terrific, long-time New York boxing man and trainer. Former partner of Al Gavin, the late Al Gavin. He's very badly missed. This is a good one so far. Evenly matched fight, contrasting styles. Minto's going to try to be quicker. Matt Alone's going to try to be stronger, bigger, more aggressive. Traded uppercuts a moment ago. Matt Alone keeps pressing forward, trying to walk right in. He landed a couple of good right hands. The secret of getting good fights, you don't have to have the most talented, most polished guys in the world. You have to have an even matchup on paper. This is a nice matchup on paper. And there goes Mento, Matt Alone, the stronger guy. We just said it. And he shows it right there. Seven. Hey, okay. 30 seconds oh, left, a little under 30 seconds left. We'll see what kind of finish uh, Matt alone is. He should go to the body because you would expect Minto, after being hurt, to grab and to try to move Punch his head. Instincts take over. You try to survive. The easiest thing to catch when a guy's trying to survive is downstairs. Matt alone not.
not going downstairs. Well, in his first step up fight, Brian Minto almost laid down in the first round. Went down, got up, survived the first round. ESPN2 Friday Night Fights presented by Miller Lite. Grab yourself a great tasting, low carb Miller Lite. Joe Tessitore and Teddy Atlas coming to you from the Trump Taj Mahal big fight weekend in Atlantic City. We're starting it off in good fashion. Heavyweights tonight in good action in this first round, Minto and Madalone. Teddy, let's take a look at what happened in the closing moments of that first round. Under a minute to go, Madalone was pressing in the whole way, and then he finally caught him. Yeah, Madalone's the biggest, stronger guy. He catches him behind the ear there. Even though he's not the most polished guy, he put punches together. And you can see, he threw the right hand, landed on the chin, followed with another right hand, a little bit behind the ear, and down goes Minto. Again, good clean right hand first, and then a follow-up. You don't see that usually. You see the left hook come back. But that time, he doubled up with the right hand, and being that it was snappy and short, he was able to get two up, Joe, instead of one, and it gave him a 10-8 round. So a good start to the night for Vinny Madalone, Brian Minto, his camp admitted that earlier tonight, there were some butterflies. Biggest card he's ever been on, biggest arena, and his TV debut, and a left hand didn't help there from Vinnie Madalone. You know, Mento turned pro late, 27 years old. But if you're gonna do it, he did it the right way. Very active. Somebody yeah. gave him a piece of advice, Teddy. You need to catch up a bit. Boy, did he. Oh, yeah. Nine fights in 2003 for Mento. And this is his eighth fight already this year. So, yeah, he's doing it the right way, trying to catch up. Right now, Matt alone is trying to catch up to Mento. Mento's trying to keep it that way. Places a left hand. Mento is able to grasp hold of Matt alone. Get himself off the ropes. Except for that fight against the older Al Cole, Matt alone is a fort. Very soft opposition. And of course, Mito has fought the same kind of soft opposition as Madalone. In fact, they have two common opponents. The difference is Madalone is stronger. So far, that's certain. As he's gotten on the inside in the second round, he scored with the left hand and now goes to the body with the right before Minto ties up. So you just said it ties up. You don't mind hearing that if you're a back of Minto. I don't think you want to hear that if you're a back of Madalone, the biggest stronger guy. He gets in close. You don't want to hear tie up. You want to hear left, right, left, right. In other words, you want him to keep his hands free so he can take advantage of being the bigger guy. Not that. Not allowing himself to get tied up, not cooperating with Mitchell. As Madalone comes in that time, didn't fire anything off, and Minto put a left and right again. Now an uppercut on the inside from Madalone. mito has got the right idea. Punch and move. Take advantage of Madalone being over aggressive when he doesn't come in with his jab, when he comes in a little wide, get off those quick fast peppering shots not big shots but peppering shots and then get out he'd be right in this fight if he can keep doing he, that and there it is right there teddy he placed a good lead right hand as madalone came in just beat madalone to the punch on the way in and then don't be there for the receipt lots of action early on on friday night fights Friday Night Fights presented by Miller Lite. Round number three between Brian Minto and Vinny Madalone. Madalone scored a knockdown in the first round. I'm Joe Tessitore alongside Teddy Atlas. Madalone wearing the black with white trim. Minto in the gold with black trim. Talked about the fact earlier, Teddy, that Matt alone, and to look at him, you would never think this, but was a very fluid high school athlete as a baseball player. Was a standout at Holy Cross and Bayside, third baseman there, went on to pitch at Pfeiffer University in North Carolina, and then signed to play minor league ball in the independent Northern League with the Adirondack Lumberjacks. It was then in which, during days off between baseball games, he entered a tough man contest, and the rest is history. And right now, you're looking at a 30-year-old 
228-pound version of Vinny Madalone, pressing forward in his 23rd pro fight. Well, at 30 years of age, Madalone understands how important this fight is, how important this chance to be on national television is. He's come in as light as weight in three years. I think Madalone should be going in the body, cutting the ring down. Come in behind the jab so you don't get pot shot it. There you go. Keep your opponent who's looking to do that. Throw those scatter shots, throw those peppering shots. Keep him defensive with your jab. Cut the ring down, but go downstairs. Start to take those legs away from the smaller, quicker Minto. You know, one of his greatest abilities in this fight for Minto is to be able to move, to be elusive. Use the ring. Take that away. No better way to take it away than go downstairs, deflate those tires a little bit. And left hand. Minto tries to return a left of his own. It's been much of the same for the first half of this third round. Minto circling around. Madalone trying to cut off the ring, but more or less chasing and following. Madalone in the black and white trunks. In the back of those trunks, you can see a beautiful tribute to the late Al Gavin. Rest in peace, Al Gavin. Al used to work with Madalone. As we said earlier, along with Bob Jackson, Bob Jackson, partner of Mal Gavin for 40 years. A look as you get a glimpse at the back of the trunks of Matt alone. There he's working behind the left hand, and Minto ties up. Neither one of these fighters had a lot of amateur background. They're learning on the job. 15 amateur fights for Minto, eight amateur fights, and four tough man fights for Matt alone. You know what? It's got good energy. It's an even fight. It's enjoyable, and it's got good crowd here. In round number one, He's coming off a third round in which he was 20 of 58. Had a good rally at the end of the third round. Tries to open up the fourth round here with an uppercut. You see the punches through round number three. 48 to 46 advantage for Matt alone. Of course, a right hand in the first round. The most important of those 48. Everybody scoring the knockdown. The best opportunities offensively for the bigger, stronger, maybe slower Matt alone is in close. Hence, why he's always pressing forward. Again, I think he can serve himself going downstairs. Flatten those tires a little bit. But they always moving. Minto. There's two good opportunities offensively. Portals for him to get off his shots, so to speak, Joe, for Matt alone. One is to catch Minto as he goes out. The other is, Minto, he wants to have the tactic of punching and getting out. Every once in a while, watch Minto. He'll throw punches here, forget to move. He'll pose just a little bit. That's an opportunity for Matt alone to come right back. Catch him taking a picture. Minto firing off first that time on that exchange. Teddy, the corner of Brian Minto, Tom Antello in the corner of the trainer for Brian Minto, set after the third round. Two more rounds, two more rounds. And what he was referring to there is, I need you to box and circle around and use the ring for two more rounds. Then we're going to, it's going to be a fight. They're looking for a second half fight and try to win this fight boxing based on their conditions. Yeah, but you know what? The problem with that is that Minto has to work so much harder to get an edge in this fight because he's not the bigger guy, he's not the stronger guy, he's not the puncher. So he's got to look at him. Just watch him. He's got to throw so many more punches and he's got to be constantly on the move. Where Matt alone doesn't have to work quite as much. One of his punches can make up for four of Minto. So you're right. Minto's going to have to be in terrific shape mentally and physically. And I think he needs to get a lead now just in case having to work so hard, Joe, he starts to tire a little bit down the stretch. Maybe the gas tank gets a little bit low. Just watch Mento, he's got to work so much more. He's got to grab, he's got to move all the time. He's got to throw six, seven punches to every one or two of Matt alone, just to keep Matt alone on it. Right hand over the top for Matt alone. Now he presses in looking for something. There's a little cut that has started under the left eye of Vinny Madalone. At the end of this round, let's check in 
with Brian Kenny and Sean Bay Mitchell. Guys? All right, Joe, thank you very much. Uh, you know, it, I'm with one of the most skilled fighters in the world, but Minto is kind of learning on the job. He's got little subtle skills in there. Stop laughing so much. I mean, for a guy at his level. Because you got the tough man against the scared man. <laughs> I have a pad man. I'm going to get him in shape. <laughs> Scott Buchanan, it's your time. <laughs> in the heavyweight division, in the a lot heavyweight of things division. can happen. But that's it. You know, but you know what? Uh, how often do you see a guy showing that type of head movement in the heavyweights? I mean, you guys, yeah. your size, you must do it. Heavyweights just don't do it. Well, when you're running scared like that, you have to do something. And, mm -hmm. and actually, it's working for his advantage because he's, he's making a miss, slip and move. And this guy is a tough man. He's getting ready, Matt alone, he's getting ready to run out of gas. Yeah, I think so. Look, Ten, Amico, Amico better be. <laughs> right around the corner. Right around the corner. <laughs> Ten rounds a long way for these yeah, guys. All right, definitely. Joe Teddy, we'll send it back to you. All right, so Charmbe agreeing with the corner of Minto. There's a look at what's coming up tonight. Oleg Maskayev. David DeFiabon, you see Oleg getting ready for the main event. 35 years old, the former heavyweight contender, trying to get back in the mix of a wide open heavyweight division. He'll be taking on the unbeaten former Olympic medalist, David DeFiabon. That's still to come. This is round number five between Minto and Madalone. If Minto's people are waiting for Madalone to run out of gas, as I said earlier, he's come in as light as weight in three years. They might be disappointed. You know, don't forget another thing. Talk about Minto coming down the stretch, but he's taking punishment here from the bigger guy. The more punishment he takes early, the less he have left late. Well, Teddy, the other point is when you look at the scorecard, there's already a 10-8 round for Vinnie Matt alone, and you may as well put many of those early rounds on his side of the ledger. And another point, that's, that's well taken. When I'll go with that with is that Minto, if he does fall behind, which he is on our scorecard, and there's a 10-8 round in there to put him a little bit more behind, when you're not the puncher, and he's definitely not the puncher, it's harder to find a way to catch up. Teddy's scorecard, 39-36. Added the same way, only gave the second round to Minto, of course, the 10-8 first round, as Madalone connected with the right hand that floored Minto in the final minute of that first round. Lunging in behind the left hand, goes to the body with the right, does Madeline. It's the kind of fight, because of the physical assets and lack of assets for both guys, where Madeline can make mistakes, he can still win a fight, he's the bigger guy. Minto can't make too many mistakes, he takes shots like that and the fight can be over. It's more important for Minto to really be on his P's and Q's. Box is close to a technically real correct fight as he can. Not alone. Or he's a little raw, a little cruder, but stronger. He can make mistakes, overcome the mistakes. Matter of fact, that's part of his game. Overcoming mistakes, trying to enforce or impose his power onto the other guy. And that's exactly what I think we're seeing right now, Teddy, as this moves on. Left hand lands, Minto ties up. Minto doing as good a job defensively as he can, even though he's getting forward shots every once in a while. He needs to start coming back and making Madalone pay when he makes a miss. Do some countering and get off first before Madalone gets into his punching distance. We mentioned it early. Madalone wants to be close to punch. Minto has to make sure he doesn't allow that. He needs to get off before, like he is now. Get off there before Madalone gets close. The only thing, don't wait around for him to come back. And after that stiff left hand here in this fifth round, you can see some blood now coming from the nose of Brian Minto. Just about halfway through this scheduled 10 round. Come back to Friday Night Fights, round number six of our first fight this evening. Brian Minto, undefeated heavyweight from Western Pennsylvania, his first step up. Taking on Vinny Madalone. The New York fighter who stepped up once before. That was a fight right here in Atlantic City against former world champion Al Cole. He was busted up bad in this fight, but he said it was a learning experience. He's worked hard in the gym, and he wants to showcase his skills and his power tonight. He punches in round five. Not alone. 19 to 15 connect advantage. Not alone gets in close where he wants to be. He allows himself to get tied up. He must not cooperate in that way with Minto. Man alone has to find a way to keep his hands free. There's lots of ways. Rotate your shoulders back, take a step back. Bottom line, keep those hands moving when you're inside if you're the bigger guy. 
caught a left hand as he was in the inside. Got real comfortable there. Teddy scorecard 49-45. 10 8 first round. Matalone scored the knockdown with a right hand. Matalone's been the biggest, stronger guy, but one thing that has helped Minto is Matalone's been throwing one shot at a time. Minto's been able to survive, even being on the floor one time early on, but the one shot at a time is helping Minto. Yeah, Matalone's stronger. You put him on the floor, but one shot so far, Minto can deal with. the corner a terrific corner with Bob Jackson with Matt alone's gonna tell him. combinations no more single shots part of the shortcoming of Matt alone yeah, he's bigger and stronger but he's not faster it's not really his forte to put punches together and there's the best punch of the fight for Brian Minto that right hand moments ago and it comes because of technique not because of strength no physical assets, no genetic assets, just being that technically he made a miss and he counted. Good action here in round number six. You can see the blood from that cut under the left eye of Vinny Matalone. Minto's nose started bleeding in the fifth round, and now is both trade, both those situations worsening. You're watching Friday Night Fights presented by Miller White. We're coming to you from the Trump Taj Mahal, a night of heavyweights for you. I'm Joe Tessitore alongside Teddy Atlas, Charm Babe Mitchell, and Brian Kenny in studio tonight. Still to come tonight, Oleg Maskaev and David Defeabon in our heavyweight main event. Good right hand by Matt alone to try to catch up there, but again, that's the problem. A right hand, no left hook behind it. And again, Minto getting some good work here this round, but having to work really hard to keep an edge. Minto, Matt alone through six. Round number seven between Minto and Matt alone. There's Brian Minto in the gold with black trim. He went down in the first round, got up. He's been trying to come back in this fight ever since against the bigger and more powerful Vinny Matt alone. Minto, former Division II linebacker at Slippery Rock, didn't start boxing until he was 23 years old from Western Pennsylvania. He has spent a lot of time working as a Mason. Teddy, he could use a uh, Good heavy-handed brick to the side of Vinny Matalone's face, and he tries to come up with it right there with a the right hand. Well, Matalone could use a jab right now instead of just walking in, because he's walking in, and the boxer in this fight is mental. The quicker guy is mental, and he's doing it the old-fashioned way. That just getting shots off before the slower plotting Matalone gets close enough to do any damage, and it's working real well. For Mentor, you see his confidence level going sky high. And you can see cuts now around both eyes of Vinnie Madeline. This is what the Minto camp was looking for. They wanted to survive those first five rounds after the knockdown and then start turning it on in the second half of the fight. Madeline is hurt. Madeline is hurt. He threw a wide left hook. And Minto did the textbook thing. What do you do? You beat him with a straight right hand. It gets there quicker than off. And right now, Matt alone is on wobbly legs. So as we said from the outset, Joe, a nice even match fight. And you know what? This is good boxing. This is entertaining. They might not be world champions, but let me tell you, this is fun to watch. Listen to the crowd here at the Trump Taj Mahal reacting to every shot landed from Brian Minto. He's turned this fight around. That's all you need, good matchmaking. And this was good matchmaking here. Give the matchmaker credit. And a good crowd doesn't hurt. You got the energy right here. Minto landing 67% of his punches in the first two minutes of this seventh round. He was 30 out of 45 in the first two minutes. Looping right hand over the top. Comes back with the left. And the speed and the technique is what is carrying Minto right now. Yeah, he's the smaller guy, but right now it doesn't matter that Matt alone is the bigger guy. Now the smaller guy is quicker, he's smarter, and he's better right now. And you know what? He's mixing it up, Mento. Not only hurting Matt alone to the head, but taking something out of the bigger guy going downstairs. And not only the bleeding and the cuts are bothering Matt alone, but the swelling. Those wide shots of Matt alone, they are hurting him now. Not only aren't they landing, but they're giving Minto an opportunity to be offensively effective. 
giving him all the openings he needs. What a turnaround here in this seventh round. A huge round for the undefeated Brian Minto. Vinny Matalone, you see the cuts were addressed. Cuts around both eyes now as he starts off the eighth round. A fight that has turned full circle. Brian Minto was down in the first round. Matalone pressed forward, landed a big right hand. Dominated the action in the first half of this fight. But as you see, the punches in round number seven, right. a round that Minto dominated himself. 40 out of 63 in terms of power punches. He was 28 out of 39. A standing target winning that alone. Minto landed 72%, Teddy. That alone still has the power. And right now, Minto has to make a mistake. Teddy Atlas' the scorecard getting tight now. Last two rounds went to Minto, 67-65. Of course, that first round, 10-8, really helps Matt alone now. Right now, Minto has to make a mistake for Matt alone to get in control of this fight once again. And that mistake would be admiring his work. Throwing a punch and just admiring his work, posing a little bit, where maybe Matt alone, the stronger guy, can come back and land a shot that can turn this fight back in his favor. That's what he needs right now. And that's why right now Minto should be boxing on the outside, countering, getting off first, making sure he takes care of defense. He's a quicker guy. He's technically the better guy. Come on, guys, come on. Right now, while well, Minto is resting, Matt alone should be trying to press behind that jab. And as I said earlier, Teddy, so, that speaks volumes right there. Yeah, and as I, it does speak volumes because Matt alone right now wants to take a rest himself, even though Minto is opening the front door. That one punch from Vinny Malone. He came over the top with a looping right hand. And the door is being opened. Stop pulling, stop pulling, okay? And the commotion that stop you hear in the crowd, yeah. and we hope he's all right, is one of our cameramen took a spill as both heavyweights crashed into that corner. And he's back up, thank goodness. A right hand now for Malone. As we just finished saying, Mitchell can't afford to make a mistake the one way. That Malone can get back in this fight is for Minto to make a mistake. He just made a mistake. A lot of heart on both fighters. What they lack in skills and in form, and it may be in talent in some areas. Boy, oh boy, oh boy, they make up in guts. What a turnaround now! Look at this eighth round as Madalona has come alive in the final minute. Mento opened up that front door by slowing down, by landing front, by not getting off his shots as Madalona came in. for Matt alone to land. He missed him close because he went to the head. He didn't go to the body, but he caught Minto going straight back. What a fight we have here in Atlantic City tonight as the referee, oh, Alan Huggins. Boy, oh boy, Stop Minto looks it, okay? like he's out of it. Warning go. for the holding as they come to the end of the eighth round. Spectacular action between Minto. Look at this, action inside and outside. There's Bud McHugh, our cameraman, goes down from that collision against the ropes. Bud landed about 10 feet back in the front row and made it back to his position to shoot the last 30 seconds of that fight. He's as tough as Minto and Matt alone. We have a spectacular opening fight of action here on Friday Night Fights. Not the most skilled guys in the world, but you want toughness, you want passion and determination. Brian Minto in the gold trunks with black trim, the undefeated fighter in his first step-up fight coming to Atlantic City, was down in the first round, seemingly lost the first five rounds of the fight, came back huge in the sixth and seventh round to hurt Vinny Matalone, and all of a sudden, in the final minute of that eighth round, Matalone came back to hurt Minto. In fact, he landed 25 of 27 power shots in that eighth round. Minto giving away the momentum, maybe the control of the fight in the last two rounds, Moving around, not moving his hands, walking away. You know, our terrific champion in the studio there, Sean Bay Mitchell, I respectfully disagreed with him earlier. He said that Mandalone would run out of gas, but right now it looks like the guy in better shape is Mandalone right now. The last round, Mitchell looked like he could barely get back to the corner. 
I think part of it might be mental, but the reason why I thought that Matt alone finished a little stronger than Mento, even though he's the bigger guy, Joe, is because I was saying early, Mento's got to work so much harder to stay ahead of this fight. He's got to throw five, six, seven punches. Take so much out of him. Yeah, to the one of Matt alone. And because of that work rate, the last round, he looked like he was spent, making a little bit of a comeback here. That's why part of it... And our terrific okay. champion, okay. Sean Bay Mitchell, can tell you that. He come can attest to that. Part of it is mentally, who's more disciplined? And right now, that's what this fight is coming down to. Again, Matt alone, you know what's coming. Big shots, wide shots. You can beat him to it with shorter, better technical shots. And when Mitchell wants to move his hands and does move his hands and disciplines himself, Mitchell's able to have a little edge. That discipline so important right now. Both guys tired. Now it's a matter of who's more together. Who's stronger in the mental department? Well, for the majority of this ninth round, the answer has been Vidi Matalone. We'll see if it stays that way as we come down to the last three minutes of this fight. Lead right hand scores for Matalone. Mento tries to return fire with a looping left that comes with nothing but air. And again, on the inside, Matalone's people want him to be free. Mento wants to do what he's doing. Tie Mento, up. Matt alone, one round to go. And final round of what has been a wonderfully entertaining heavyweight fight between Brian Minto and Vinny Matt alone. Neither man has ever gone 10 rounds. They've entertained for 10 full rounds tonight. Matt alone dominated early on, scored the knockdown. Minto came back and seemingly had Matt alone hurt the seventh round. The shorter oh, punch, the better form, oh, and Matt alone seven, is not finishing this eight, fight even if he gets up. And can you enough. believe this? What a turn of events yet again! Boy, oh boy, oh boy. Terrific fight. What took place after the ninth round is that the corner of Brian Minto, led by Tom Yankello, berated him. They said, this is for your family. This is about your dreams. Go out and do it. Boy, did he do it. And that's why you can't take anything for granted. You got to be in top gear all the time. Matt alone came out, maybe figured that it would be all right to have a slow start, take his time early on at the beginning of the round. But you know what? Minto had something else in his mind. And that's why he captured this fight in a sensational manner after a terrific battle with this terrific crowd and a well-matched fight that we applaud. Mitchell's better evening. form. Better form, shorter punches, better technique. Carried him over the stronger man alone. It's not about who's stronger, who's bigger. We say that so many times on the air. It's about who's smarter. It's about who's stronger mentally about who can get the job down. Matt Minto got the job down, done, when it counted, and here it is. You can see Matt alone comes out, he throws a right hand, he goes too far over, he misses, he starts to come back with a left hook, his eye contact came off of Minto, and he gets nailed the left hook. Here again, the missed right hand by Matt alone, he starts to come back, he's wide open, his eyes are off, Minto, and the left hook crashes home, you don't see the punch, it discombobulates your body. Here's another look. Watch the right hand miss. That's technique. And then a nice short left hook by Minto, and the night is over. And Teddy, entering that 10th round, I just checked ringside here. Vinny Matt alone was ahead on all three scorecards entering that 10th round. Well, I had him ahead 86 to 84. So I would expect... There's a very visibly upset Vinny Matt alone. He falls to 21 and 2. Brian Minto is now 18 and 0 with 11 knockouts. He knew that he had plenty to prove, the former college football player. He ripped through the common opponents of Western Pennsylvania and Western Virginia. Now he comes to AC and gets the big win that he was looking for. Let's check in with Charmbay and Brian. Guys. <laughs>